everybody, it's Felisa. I'm still struggling with this dog on cold, man, I'm telling you. Um, but I'm gonna remain grateful because I was able to leave work while it's still daylight outside. I'm headed home to get under this electric blanket, get my NyQuil and my hot toddy so I can stop sounding like Wheezy Jefferson out in these streets. <laughs> But anyway, I had a comment, Some, one of my subs asked if I would do a vlog on overt narcissism. And I told her, of course I would. So Demetri, this is for you. Shout out to you. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Um, but I've done, I've done vlogs on narcissism, um, included elements of ghosting the silent treatment, gaslighting, you know, how you feel when you come away with, um, after being in a relationship with a narcissist, all the things that you go through, etc., etc. And I want to make sure that I'm saying, at least on this vlog, because I can't remember if I issued a disclaimer on the other ones, I like to think that I did, which is that I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, um, so I don't want what I'm saying to be misinterpreted as professional advice um, and it should never be in lieu of seeking professional help particularly if you you know feel that you are still struggling with a situation or an illness who's well, getting hot <laughs> still struggling with a situation or an illness that um, mental illness that is debilitating for you and I want to make sure that I'm very clear that mental illness does not mean crazy so please let's stop with the you know the, the false equivalencies and you know suggesting that mental illness somehow means that you are unstable um, in your psyche it just means that there is something that is going on with you mentally that is not quite where it should be and you know depression definitely falls under that umbrella and under those auspices so let's just be very clear you know seek help when you need it don't be afraid and definitely don't be ashamed because all of us are broken in some type of way that's how the light gets in anyway so here we go um phew, narcissism is always a weighty topic for me because i've had my fair share of run-ins with narcissists and narcissism and you know you always walk away um, a little bit worse for, for wear after having been exposed to them. Um, they are like emotional leeches that leave you emotionally scarred. And I'm starting to really tell people that if you've come in contact with a narcissist at any given time, you don't have to wonder. You definitely don't have to wonder. You know, you really do know. And when you walk away, you come away with some type of PTSD, PTSD after that encounter and the longer that you're with them the worse it becomes um but i i will say this about overt narcissists you know as the name implies overt is you know usually very in your face is not hidden it's not something that you have to work to go find and that's what overt narcissism is you know these are you know you're grandiose look at me you know always want to be in the center of attention always in the limelight you know they redirect every single conversation back to themselves because they want to be celebrated and lauded um they don't want the focus on anybody but them <laughs> they are very unsettled when that happens um they also use the same tools that any other narcissist will use which is gaslighting you know they punish you when you know you do things that please them i mean when you do things to displease them and they reward you when you do things that make them happy and usually doing what they say and towing the law the line makes them happy but um they also can be very manipulative and very controlling and can put you in situations where you think that you're doing what you want, you think you're doing what they want you to do. And turns out you were being set up and um, whatever it is that you do ain't right. And so, you know, you get the verbal ab abuse and the, the verbal um, tongue lashing and the, you know, the name calling and the finger pointing and all those kinds of things. Gaslighting is also a good tool for them to use because they make you think that, you know, right is wrong and wrong is right. Essentially that you're going crazy. That, you know, things that you think that they're doing, they're not really doing that. What's wrong with you? That didn't happen. Why are you saying that? Why are you so crazy? Okay, I'm not having this conversation with you. You're just being crazy. You're always being crazy. 
listen sis trust your gut <laughs> trust your gut before your, your gut don't know what to say to you i will say one thing that i don't think that i've mentioned um in previous vlogs so narcissists tend to be attracted to two particular personality types in my opinion the first is what i'm gonna call an empath empath or intuitive now i am not an empath i have empathic traits i can be empathic at times i, I can't control it um and i don't like it <clears throat> a true empath though is always on meaning that they absorb the energy and the hurt and the pain um and it's not always negative but this is you know the hurt and pain is what is debilitating to them so they absorb this negative energy these negative kinds of feelings and thoughts of, and emotions from other people so you know they are around someone that is depressed around someone that is despondent around someone who is psychologically damaged and they take on those feelings and they feel that person's pain they feel that person's tragedy and it's very difficult for them to distance themselves from that and if they automatically want to help to to, uh, to heal to nurture narcissists gravitate to that because they're like emotional leeches and they you know they hook into these people who usually are very kind and very supportive and take advantage of them and take their kindness for weakness um and so because they are you know just emotional you know like i said emotional leeches they latch onto them and just suck the life out of them and before you know it the empath is really just a shell of who they used to be and it's dang near impossible for them to to break free of that because now they are at the mercy of this narcissist and really what they're seeking is the approval and you know kind of the the guidance that their narcissist provides it's almost like stockholm syndrome where you know that you've been abused but you've been abused for so long until the the normal becomes abnormal and the abnormal becomes normal you don't know which is which anymore and that's really unfortunate the second group of people that they usually gravitate to are people who um, have low self-esteem and um, have low self-value and therefore um, have a tendency to become codependent and again it's kind of like it's almost like this this parental child relationship where you know you seek approval from this individual and they don't let me be clear they don't start off with you know treating you like crap at least for the most part you know they start off treating you very well you know they call you they whine you they dine you you know shower you with superfluous praise and you know superfluous attention make you think that they're all in you know and then at some point you've done something i actually was watching what's i watching what's the name of that show love after lockup or lockup or something I, don't, I can't remember what the name of the show is it's a reality show and all these people are in love with people in prison and did you all know they cited a website called Meet It Meet It Inmate or something like that. My dumb self goes to the website because I didn't believe it exists. You know how it exists? Y'all know that it's like it's inmates in there in anyway. So they met on this website. And um, this one particular young lady, she has issues with her mother. So, you know, I'm assuming that she has low self-esteem. You know, she is fighting for this love with this man in prison. She's never met him face to face, it's all been telephone calls. And she kept saying how he makes her feel so amazing and he does for her what nobody else has done for her, which I mean, in under normal situ circumstances, she was like, what has he done? So it's like, he, he, can't, he ain't done nothing but call you collect. But whatever it is, <clears throat> this has been the highlight of this woman's life which is sad as you really think about it i'm not clowning it like this is really sad anyway she had been talking to um the guy has a drug problem i believe because i get them all confused anyway that's why he's in jail and this wasn't his first trip to um you know to the concrete uh sale 
this, this was like his third or fourth time and every time he's gotten out he's violated I'm thinking because of drugs and he's wound up right back into lockup and so the mom has some concerns she was talking to his mother the mother you know invited her over to the house once to talk to her face to face and you know how they have like the the camera um, interview yes I just don't know if Kathy knows exactly what she's getting herself into you know stuff like that where they talking like you can't hear them maybe they can't hear them I don't know anyway let me get back on topic um so the mom was saying that she didn't think that the young lady knew her son well enough she's like I'm his mama I know you know this is not his first time in jail if he don't get himself together it won't be his last time in jail and I'm just worried for this young lady like who sick for her anyway so the um the young lady calls the the, the, the boyfriend and or the boyfriend calls her and you know she's all excited because she, she's there with his mother and um she's like hey babe you know guess who i'm here with and he's like oh and she's like your mom and so she's like we're here together he went the smooth off when i tell you he went clean off i was like what is wrong who are you talking to like i was offended for her <laughs> honey she got so upset and so unnerved he still wasn't making any sense so then the mother was like you know what I'm just gonna give you guys some space. I'm gonna go in another room so you guys can talk. You know, the guy accused them of setting up stuff and you know working in cahoots and like it was just really crazy and really paranoid behavior. It wasn't really. That was a way for her for him to control her. Cause you know what? I bet you, I bet you she won't do that again. I bet you that she will not go see that mother. She will not have any conversation with her and she will not have any dealings with her that that man does not know about and does not approve. And you know why? Because that mama knows something that he don't want this girl to know. I will bet my pinky toenail on it. I don't want to bet too much just in case I'm wrong. Cause you know, I can afford to lose a toenail, but not the whole toe. Y'all get me. Anyway, so that's kind of like a, a long drawn out story, but I wanted to illustrate that where just at, you know, a drop of a hat, it becomes completely off and you're scolded like a four year old, but because this person's love and, and attention is so important to you, you are willing to sacrifice whatever shred of humanity and whatever shred of, you know, in most cases, womanhood that you have. I'm not saying that it can't happen to fellas, but it generally happens to women more often. And next thing you know, you find yourself isolated and find yourself, you know, away from your friends and family and afraid to make any decision independent of this person because you don't want to displease them. Those relationships are dangerous. They're psychologically damaging and it takes so long for you to even get to the place where you can trust yourself and trust someone else. So, you know, this this vlog is kind of going on a little longer than I wanted it, wanted it to, but I wanted to make sure that I said that and I definitely wanted to make sure that I included that example because it's so important for you to be able to hear and understand what's happening. Many, many times people are in these relationships and they're like crabs in a pot. The heat is slowly being turned up and they have no idea. And the next thing you know, you know, the crab stays in that pot because they just adjust the temperature. And that temperature, whatever it is, is normal to them. It continues to be normal. And they keep a adjusting to the abnormal temperature. My, instead of saying, my water not supposed to be this hot, hot oh, you know, this is just tropical water. <laughs> whatever it is, crab tell themselves, if they tell themselves anything. But the point that I'm making is, you know, don't settle for situations and circumstances because you, you, you holding on to this relationship is much more valuable to you than you holding on to your sanity. Don't do that to yourself. Please don't do that to yourself. And if you find yourself unable to extract yourself from a relationship because of whatever, because of psychological ties, because of, you know, psychological weakness, please, please, please start to get some counseling start to find a therapist that can help you work through all of that stuff because that baggage did not start with that person and it won't end with that person trust me when i tell you this these are things that are systemic and roots deep you're gonna have to work to get to that healing you now having to do with that person that person is just the manifestation of the disease not the disease itself so just like with any other disease you don't treat the symptoms 
like you just don't like you gotta eradicate the disease itself you don't treat the symptoms of cancer and not do something about the cancer because it's possible to have cancer and not have any symptoms y'all follow anyway i'm felisa i hope that this vlog has been helpful for you um leave your comment below if you've had run-ins with narcissists and you've worked to extract yourself from that i love to hear from you and hear how you're doing now on your journey and if you found love that's whole and healthy for you um don't forget to subscribe and share this vlog if you found it helpful i'll talk to you later bye